Welcome to Debate Club, where two varsity contributors go head-to-head on issues that matter to students. This week's episode has to do with student government. Debaters duke it out over finances, accountability, and advocacy. The UTSU's decision to fire those two coordinator positions, the dental and the social clubs coordinators, I think was a, was a you could say, a good try at, at trying to limit uh, the, the debt that the, the, the UTSU is currently racking. But I think it's reflective of a growing uh, issue when it comes to spending, which is that the fact that the UTSU has to fire, lay off what you could say are these two important positions reveals that there's a much more dire financial situation. I think that also does speak to the fact that there is current, like, um, people are not very happy with the funds that they're paying, which oftentimes limits the student government's ability to raise funds as they see fit or as is needed. And I think that that's actually a really large problem in that this, these student governments provide really, really necessary services. I mean, if you told that to anyone living in the States, they'd be like up north within 10 minutes, right? So when people are unwilling to pay these fees because there's a lot of resentment towards them, it really limits the capacity that these student governments have to implement these very necessary and impactful policy. And that's why I would say that like, I do support the kinds of measures that they take to try and help the budget. I mean, it's not like these positions and their portfolios no longer exist. They are being integrated into other positions and at the point at which they're saving money doing so, I do always support efficacy in use of funds and I think that that is a good example of student governments recognizing when they are going too far into debt and how to try and reconcile and to improve and to change. So I would say that like, I think more funding is something that would vastly help these student unions, but in the absence of that, I think that they've shown how to be responsible with their funding and how to be effective with it. What I would argue is that uh, the student union's handling of, of funds, mm-hmm. predict, like in the question of where those funds are going and how they're being used, I think is lacking. Uh, the, the biggest example is uh, St. Michael's, St. Michael's Student Union, mm-hmm. to the extent that they were spending uh, lavish amounts of, of student money on uh, dinners and ski resorts. Uh, and and it was really, when it came to funding, quite an elitist organization mm-hmm. that you, that you I think it was the um, Mulroney, the, the president of SMC, that said it was more of like a... Uh, a club, uh, like a insider's club, than a than an adv- mm-hmm. advocacy group, um, and that was really ad- the on basis of its funding, on where it was spending money. But I think the, but to exp- extend that principle, I think the UTSU print uh, doesn't use its funds exactly the best it could. I actually think that that's a really good example of the democratic process and being at work and checks and balances actually being effective in that there are huge reformations going on within that at the moment. Like, so most positions or like the most important positions are currently being redone and a lot, most of the members that were involved in a lot of those scandals are now no longer a part of that union and a lot of that has come in the wake of media backlash and that it has been exposed and that's been enough to deter these people from continuing in their current roles. So I think that's something that's really important is that the structure itself is I think what I'm always going to come back to, something that's incredibly important and I think that this is a good example of when power is misused and things do go wrong, that there are ways in which we're able to solve for that and ways in which we're able to hopefully correct for it in the future to try and make sure that these things don't happen again. I think it's a lot less likely now that people will misuse those funds because, I mean, clearly it didn't work very well the first time. Clearly they were found out and there was a lot of intense backlash that they're going to have to live with for likely a long time to come. So that's something that I think is incredibly effective. The student union can't claim to represent all students' interests uh, when it has two in ten students backing it. I think that the UTSU claims and and should exist to represent all student interests and all student needs uh, and it can only effectively voice those if um, it's receiving the the voices of all students. 
And I think if you look at especially the hard positions and the hard uh, decisions that the UTSU makes on a daily basis, they can only they can only claim democratic uh, legitimacy in doing that uh, if they have a a at least more than two in ten students. The comparative then becomes: Do we represent two students out of ten, or do we represent zero students out of ten? Because I don't like. I just don't think that there is any one specific mechanism we can take to say, "Ah, yes, now we're going to get everyone out to vote." Student governments ought to to include everybody, mm -hmm. right? And make and make campus an inclusive place. But I don't think most student governments are doing that to the best of their ability. I think they are taking hard stances on controversial issues, where they they include one aspect of the student population and keep the other out. Oftentimes, these kinds of stances derive from the kind of um, movements that people within those societies support themselves. So when your entire base is saying that they want representation in terms of advocacy on BDS, I think it's beneficial when student governments take into account what their voter base is saying and what their supporters are saying and they act on that. I think that's one of the most important functions of student government is actually representing what people want. So when they do that, regardless of whether or not I agree, there are people that do agree and want it and that's why it came to be in the first place and that's something that I support. But I think what they can't do is take um, hard stances on those issues and try to silence opposition to those issues, um, which I think student governments have been doing to a certain degree. I think, for instance, there were accusations during the student commons, that building. There was accusations that, that, some, that some of the opponents that, to that building uh, were being silenced and threatened with legal action by, by the student union. In my experience with U of T, I have found that student unions are always inclusive and are always looking towards representing the student issues and student inclusivity. So to bring another example uh, with the recent events at Victoria College where there was what people thought to be a quite privileged panel discussing social inequality where student unions did take a really important stance against that to say look we support people who have actually had these experiences being the one to talk about it we need to discuss what it means to be privileged or to actually experience social inequality so those are a lot of stances that I've seen throughout all student government that I, within U of T that I've seen throughout several years and I think that's something incredibly positive that they're able to do because going back to powers and power and numbers I think that when a student government in a body that has legitimacy and validity within the U of T system is able to take those kind of stances. It does push <clears throat> U of T as a whole to be better about the kinds of responses that they come to. So that's why there was a much more productive conclusion to uh, the events that happened at Victoria College than there probably would have been otherwise. My, my main uh, line of argument is not that the, the student union is, is is bad in nature, it's just, it, it could be better. Yeah. Right. And that instead of, that, that what, it, what it's doing right now, the current state it's in is, is, is something, which I know is what you're saying, but the point is, is that there's a big gap between where it is right now and where it ought to be.